In this exercise, we'll be controlling the little character walking in four different directions. We'll have him walking up, then down, left, and or right. We're going to do this in two different ways. We're going to allow for the keyboard to be used where we can hit the up, down, left, and right arrow. But also we're going to imitate if this was to be used on a, an iPhone and as if the person was touching any one of these four controllers. So let me just demonstrate this finished version and then we'll build it from scratch. I'm just going to hit pre preview here. And if I click down, imitating a touch, I can kind of roll over those buttons and you can see our little character is not only moving in the specified direction, but he's also animated. So we will also include some animated elements so that it's not just a still image moving around the picture. At this point, we'll start a new file and create this from scratch. So I'm just going to go File New. And I'll just call this Walking Man 2. Okay. And we're good to go. I'll hit my Tab key to enter that. And I'm just going to expand my window here. And I'll go to my scenes. First initial scene. By default, you always start with one scene. And we're just going to work with one scene for now. Now to get inside of it, I can simply double click it. There's a few ways to get to that scene, but that's probably the fastest. And you can see here that we have our screen on the right again, and our panels on the left. We need to start with one actor. So under my Actors tab, I'm just going to hit the plus sign and generate a new actor, which will ultimately be the little man. And I'll give it a name, call it Walking Man and hit my enter key. And I'll actually drag that right on the stage right away and we start, can start to attribute uh, some behaviors to this. So I simply drag it and drop it anywhere I want to onto my screen. You can see here that we are in landscape mode and we're currently set for iPhone. Now currently if I select that I can double click it and start to apply some behaviors. I'm just going to open this up and create a rule. Create rule. And the first condition that I'm going to create is on mouse click arrow up, move the item up on the screen. So to be more specific, when the actor receives the event key, and we'll say which key. We'll click over here on keyboard and I'll say the up arrow. When the up arrow key is pressed down, drag a behavior down here and I'll use my change attribute behavior and just drag it right over here. And the attribute that I will be changing is the motion. So I click down here and I click on walking man and I want to scroll down till I see motion and then under here I have linear which represents X and Y and I want to go up and down so that's the Y axis so I double click on the Y and if I roll over here you can see the attribute is self meaning this instance of the actor on the stage motion linear and velocity for the Y axis and I just have to set the velocity here. I'm going to set it to 50. We'll at least start with that and hit my tab key. Now if the key is not pressed I want it to stop. So I'm going to open up this otherwise panel and I can actually copy this attribute by holding my option or alt key down and dragging it down and the only thing I'm going to change is that velocity back down to zero. Hit zero, hit my tab key. So right now, what should happen is when I hit my up arrow key, the little white box should move, move up on the screen, and when I release it, it should stop. So let's give that a try now with the preview button. So hitting the up arrow key, it's working, and releasing, it's stopping. So let's put one now for the other direction. So we can go back here using my back button. And I'll just create a new rule. 
for the down button. Now I can actually copy this and you can see that this collapses and I can rename these. So I'm actually going to double click on this name and I'll call it up. Hit my enter key. Now again, if I hold my option key down, I could duplicate it. I'm going to create one from scratch just for demonstration purposes. Just click away from there. Create rule. Actor receives event. Again, a keyboard event. Key. This time it'll be mouse down. So I'll click on the mouse. Arrow down, rather. Arrow down key is down. Execute the following behavior. Again, I will drag the change attribute behavior. And the attribute will be associated with the instance called walking man. And it has to do with motion and the direction under linear. This time will be again the y-axis. So I double click on that. But inside of my velocity I'm going to use a negative number. So I'll just go minus 50 which will send me in the opposite direction. Now again I want it to stop when I release the button on the keyboard. So I can duplicate this by highlighting it holding my option or alt key down and dragging it down and simply changing the velocity back to zero. Hit my tab key, save my file. I'll do a save as, actually I'll just do save. Okay, I'll just name this. It looks like I haven't saved it yet. Walking man exercise. And I do have a folder called game salad stuff which I'm keeping all of my files in. I will click save. So let's give this a try. Hit preview. Up arrow, up arrow, release, stop, down arrow, release, stop. So I've got motion for up and for down. So now we can do the exact same thing for left and right. Use my back button here to get back to my panels. And I will rename this rule down. There we go. Okay, so I'll create a new rule again. Actor receives event key. This time it'll be the right arrow key. And we'll attach the behavior change attribute. Again, we'll go to our instance walking man and go down to motion over to linear. This time it's the X axis, that's left to right. So I double click on X. And to the right, it's the positive numbers. So I'll type in 50 my tab key and again address the release of the button. I can double rather I can click on that and highlight it and then hold my option or alt key down and duplicate it and simply change the velocity to zero under the otherwise category and we can test that now. Preview. So the right button works. I need to do one for left. Up down, right. And you can always rewind by clicking this reset button here. And just give it a try. So let's go back now and finish the left direction. I will change that name. I'll call it right. I will save the file. It's good and prudent to save frequently. And we'll do the last one here. This time I will duplicate that rule. I'll try it here with my option key down and drag. I'll rename it. I'll call it left. And let's see here. Let's open these windows up. I believe I just really have to change this to a negative number. And that should address it because zero is zero. So that doesn't need to change. Oh yes, of course, the keyboard command. So this time we will hit the left arrow which should send us in the left direction. So let's just save this and test it. Save, preview, left arrow key down, right arrow key down, up arrow key, and down arrow key. So now we've got movement in all four directions using the arrow keys. The next thing I think we'll do is we'll uh, 
attribute some animation to these so it's a little more interesting to see. And finally, we'll actually put a little control pad on the screen so that people can use it with the touch screen command versus the arrows on the keyboard. But we'll set it up in such a way that both will work on either platform. So I'll just save this for now and we'll get on to the next step. Okay, at this point we're ready to bring this to life a little bit. We're going to replace the white box with some animation of a little guy walking up, down, left, and right. Now I've already created these images. They were generated for you, so let's just go and load those up into the project. So let me take, click on the back button here. And we'll go down to images. And we'll just click on the plus sign to add images. And I know I have a folder called the Game Salad Course, Animated Sheets. And I've got four different sequences, and I'll grab them all at once. One's called Professor Walk Down, Professor Walk Left, Professor Walk Right, and Professor Walk Up. Just we'll grab all of those, and I'll click Open. And now I have them all in my library. I'm just going to save that. And now we can actually create some animation. So we'll attribute it with each rule here. So I'll start with the up rule. Actually before I do that I'll create a default image for for the actor and we can do that by going back to behaviors and change image. I'll drag that on all by itself and I can go back to my images and I can just grab any one of these. I'll grab the first one from the first sequence and just drag it into this little well here. And we'll leave that like that. I'll actually preview this. And you can see now I can hit my up, down, left, and right arrows, but it's still not too exciting because he's not actually walking. He's just a still image moving around. It's an improvement from the white box, however. So I'll save this at this point, but at least I have a default image. Next step is we'll actually attribute some animation with each direction. So let's click our back button here and we'll go right into the rules that apply to each direction. And I'm just going to add it in the box below here. So I'll drag, I'll go back to behaviors and we have a behavior called animate. So I'll just drag that in here under change attribute and I'll find the nine images that are associated with him walking upwards which I happen to have here called Professor Walk Up. So I have one through nine so I'll just scroll down and I'll just shift click to highlight them all. Drag them into this area. Let them go. It's going to come up with a window asking if they're sequenced and they are meaning the file names end in 0, 1 and they go in progression 0, 2 and 0, 3 and so on. Click yes and it puts them in the proper order. Leave the default settings 10 frames per second loop restore actor image when done. Let's just save this and we'll test it. So now when I hit the up button I should see some animation. There we go. And when I release, it goes back to that default image. Of course, the other three directions still need the animation attributed to it. So let's go and finish this off. Back button. I'll just close up the up panel and open up the down rule. Again, we'll go to our behaviors. Animate. Just drag it into the area that has the change attribute and find the appropriate images. Now this one is for the down, which is sort of walking towards us. So it's this one. And we'll just scroll till we see the last one. Grab all nine images, drag them into that window. Click yes for sequenced. Give it a test. And it seems to be working fine. So we'll finish off the other two directions. Close this up. Save my file. You should save every time you've done something of significance. 
and now it's for the walking right. Go to my behaviors again, add the animate feature, find the appropriate images. Here's the first one, the last one with a shift click, drag them into this window, click yes for sequenced, save and test. Okay, so turning right, going up, going down, and all we have left is left. So we'll open up the left rule, grab that behavior, animate, find the appropriate images, here's the first one, I'll scroll down to the last one, shift click, drag it into the window, say yes to sequenced save the file and test the file. Left, up, down, and right. So there we have all four directions with an animated character you know, based on having some pre-existing artwork to put in there. And we have it so far being controlled off the computer keyboard. Up, down, left, and right arrows. Our next step will be to introduce an on-screen control panel that will allow for the touch screen users to drag their finger over any of the four directions to get him to go in the appropriate direction.